You are very welcome back to the show. We have our gardener, Peter Dowdall. What is Peter? You are here to tell us all about hydroponics. What well, in am, the name right. of God are they? Hydroponics are gone now, it's all about aeroponics. Okay, first of all, what are uh, the hydro part of it? Well, before we go to that, if you look at it, it's the time of the year to start off the vegetable seeds and the vegetable plants. So whether you're growing traditionally in raised beds, the allotment, whatever, now is the time to set, set your seeds. Mm -hmm. And if you look there, I'm just sowing some microgreens there. Lovely. And you quite simply, into the seed tray, or I'm using these little compostable pots, so I plant them pot and all, just mm -hmm. scatter the seed into the, into the bit of compost. How far do you push them down, Peter? Just under the soil surface when they're this small. Mm -hmm. you, you can even leave them on the soil surface. And then off you go once, they'll germinate in a couple of weeks if you keep them indoors. Mm -hmm. They'll germinate. Water them? Give them a misting now, that mm -hmm. compost is damp already. We okay. give them a mist. So how often would you mist them? You keep an eye on them every day. You, you want it to be damp without being overly moist, okay. if that's not too vague yeah. an answer, right? Mm -hmm. But, and this brings us to the aeroponics, mm -hmm. okay? For those of us, and there seems to be nearly a generation of people who have kind of developed nearly a fear of the soil, of getting their hands Why dirty. Why though? Why? Isn't that, isn't that the best part of it? I, I think so, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's the fun. And I mean, mm -hmm. this, I could go on all day. There's so much mm -hmm. benefits from working with the soil, mentally and physically. But th there does seem to be people who are scared of not only getting their hands dirty, but even worse, getting their shoes dirty, right? Yeah. So we need to all, first of all, get yeah. out into the garden. But if that is you, or if there's like there's a huge growing population, obviously of people who don't have access to mm -hmm. a garden, or they don't have access to because soil. Because they're living in apartments. Or they're living in city centres, yeah. apartments, they're working too hard, they just don't have a garden or access to an allotment. So hydroponics and aeroponics can provide the answer, mm -hmm. right? So this, what I'm doing here, this is a, a thing called rock wool. Right. Okay. Where, where can you get this? The, in well, this any garden shop? You, well, you, you get in kind of specialist hydroponic shops, mm -hmm. some garden centres, and you'll get them online. Okay. Mm -hmm. So rock wool, you soak the rock wool first, and if you can see it there, mm -hmm. I'm just going to drop the seeds in there the into the little holes. I don't mm -hmm. know if the camera can make it out. Yeah, it's probably too far down. I'll just, I'll Lift I'm it up just a bit there, yeah, by all means. Yeah. There, no. So there we have it. So we're going in the there. Seeds are how just going how many are you putting in? Four or five? I'm using the microgreens, so you can just put in a few, a few little seeds into, into mm -hmm. each hole. When right? you say microgreens, what will they turn into then? They're little salad leaves, tiny little salad leaves, yeah. Very, very high in nutrient value. Okay, so we wet that. Okay, I've already wet it somewhat yeah. and I'm going to wet it some more. So are you going to cover it up at all? I don't need to because I'm going to leave that in my kitchen windowsill. Is that the kind of aero part of it? No, 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 no I'll come back to the aero okay. part of it. That's going to be on the kitchen windowsill. Within two weeks, I'm going to have these. Okay. Right, this is the ultimate so one I prepared two weeks. earlier. Two weeks this to this it. stage, right? So now you've got little seedlings. Are they still damp there? They yeah. are, they're quite wet yeah. now, yeah. So they've, they've germinated and they've produced their first few pairs of leaves. These are little lettuce plants and mm -hmm. more microgreens and, and cress and things like this. So they're now little baby plants, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if I go over here... Well, what, what is this, Peter? This is my empty aeroponics unit. It's a, mm -hmm. a green tower, or tower garden there. I've never seen us. one of these before, no. Are these relatively new or have they been around for a while? The, the, the concept of hydroponics isn't new. Mm -hmm. That's where you're growing without soil. You're growing in rock wool. And traditional, we've gone beyond now hydroponics being new. So traditional hydroponics, uh, the roots sat in water, mm -hmm. okay? And the nutrients were fed to them through the water. Mm -hmm. With this, the roots don't sit in water. I've got a reservoir of water down okay. here. Okay. And there's a pump, an electric pump, like a, like a fish tank pump. Mm -hmm. which so feeding the water pumps up. Pumps the water up, right? Okay. So the, uh, and water, it, it kind of, how would, I, how would I describe it? It cascades down inside. So you, the roots get wet and the roots get water, but they're not sitting in water. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're very, very less likely to get any so kind of can diseases. I ask you, how do, you put the, do, you, do you have to have a uh, water feed in there or do you just fill no, it up No, you yourself? fill it with water once. Oh, right. okay, so you fill it with water once, okay. right? There's a pump in there. Mm -hmm. It recirculates. I put my nutrients in there You only do it well. once? You, you, well, you will have to top yeah. it up, oh, yeah, certainly yeah, from yeah. time to time. There's a float mm -hmm. one and that'll tell you when okay. to top it up. So it, it recirculates, so you've no, you've no water loss, you've mm -hmm. no nutrient this loss. Is, this, this is a very new concept. Very new concept, yeah, yeah, American yeah. concept. Very, spa right? very space age. Very, it sounds space age yeah. and it looks space age, but it's actually, that's it. You've done yeah. it. It's you've done, done the work. Th that, that's it. You've done the work now. You just switch it on. Okay, so what else can you put in here then? If you, you can want. put any of your edibles. You can yeah. grow strawberries in there. Very popular to grow strawberries because it's keeping them up off the ground. So there's no, there's no soil at all? There's no soil. Yes. Now, I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not pushing hydroponics or aeroponics, yeah. and I never have as a, 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 an alternative yeah. to growing soil. I would still urge all of us to grow in to traditional To get back into, the, beds, back into the soil and, and the allotments like and the raised beds. But if you don't have that yeah. luxury, and lots of us don't but we were We were talking about this before, Peter. I know it was the last year or the year before that the soil, you can only uh, set stuff in the soil so many times. Isn't yes. that right? Yes, well, so with, with 
the, uh, so, 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 if you would, so if you go down generations, right, so what's going to happen? The side won't be any good anymore, and we're probably going to have to go down this road, are we? Well, if you look at, like, the, the, on a global scale, yeah, the population is growing so much, and the, mm -hmm. the, the space isn't getting any bigger. Mm -hmm. And yes, the way we're, we're growing commercially now is damaging yeah. the soil. So, so this is part this of is the jigsaw. No, this is definitely part of the jigsaw. This is part one, yes. but this is what it's really like over here. Look at this. So this, it, is, this is beautiful. And this is quite simply, and yeah. I'm not bluffing you, this has come from a friend of mine's kitchen, mm -hmm. and it's gone from that seed to this in six weeks. Okay, so that's six, not long. six weeks. That's not long, no. and that's easy. Who else would have one of these, Peter? Very popular in, in uh, hotels, mm -hmm. restaurants, that kind of thing. But like any amateur gardener, you can put that in if you're just in an apartment on the balcony mm -hmm. or inside. If you have it on the, the balcony outside, yeah. you don't need and the you can lights. Have, can you have it inside and outside? Absolutely. So, and if, if it's outside, you don't need the lights? Don't need the lights. But would it help if you do, or does it matter? In, in Ireland, particularly during the winter, okay. it would, yes, it, it would, would help. Yeah, but you don't need them. But also, if you think about it, even if you do have a garden, and lots of people who grow traditionally during the spring and summer, they use this for their winter, yeah. right? And particularly if you're that bit... Uh, how would I say, if you're back, mm -hmm. if you have a bad back or if you're, you know, you're, you're, you're over the days of stooping down yeah, and getting yeah. dirty. This is, this is, this is Ideal. perfect. Ideal. Now you can hear the water there as well. I find it therapeutic. It's like a little water feature yeah, going like in the garden, like, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I really like and it. And the other thing to say, of course, is with kids, because again, not only have we a generation who are scared of getting dirty, we, we've really become disconnected mm -hmm. with where our food comes from. We yeah. think it comes from the supermarket shelves. Kids now, if that's in <laughs> the kitchen... It comes from one of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK, yeah. well, it's not too different, is it? But, 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 but if it's in the kitchen, the kids yeah. will use it. They'll yeah. pinch that off, put it in a sandwich, put it yeah. in a... Yeah, as dinner. opposed to going down the garden if it's raining, they mightn't go out. They, 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 they can get it from... But, but, but we're not telling anyone to, to, to do it this way. We're telling people to go out to the garden as well. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think There's enough space there for the everyone. Answer. Yes, it's yeah. part of the answer. So I would urge us definitely to get back to the allotment to raise beds, but if you don't have that luxury, okay. this is the way of so doing it. So what would it cost roughly, Peter? A unit like that will cost you about 650. 650. Yeah, so there's a bit of an outlay day one, yeah. but if you think about the amount of money that you'd spend on fresh herbs, heads yeah. of lettuce, strawberries, etc., you know, you wouldn't be long getting it back. We have a few picks here. We have pyracantha. What in the name of God is pyracantha? Pyracantha is a beautiful uh, yeah. red berry plant. Flowers. I know it now. I, yeah. know it. I have one in my garden, actually. Lovely white flowers during the kind of... <laughs> but you know it by something else. Um, the one uh, the birds always eat. <laughs> yeah, it, it flowers in kind of April, May, yeah. and then these berries during the winter. Okay, so that was uh, Eileen Kelly. Oh, that's from, question. From, uh, just to make sure that the berries are there. That's what she's looking at. Is there a way of ensuring more berries on the plant? Oh, yes. Okay, so the, the flowers which happen in April, May, they develop into berries. Uh, now, we depend on the bees for that. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you have flowers and they're not becoming berries, then that's a pollination issue, so maybe there aren't enough mm -hmm. bees. Uh, if you're not getting flowers, Give it, a, give it a shot of sulfate of potash or something like that. Hydrangea, and Mary McCabe says, what's the best time to cut? Uh, to cut hydrangea, you're coming close to the time now, sometime during March. Right, Mary, get the scissors ready. <laughs> Peter, thank you, as Thanks, always. Great, great to have you. Now. In